we went for caucus outside of the building because uh, uh, we'd got, gotten wind that uh, they may be doing a call of the House, which is a pre procedural thing that, that essentially locks you into the Senate chambers. You can't leave. Um, and so we met outside of the building and, and uh, we discussed uh, the amendments, some of them that we wanted to introduce, and we all had a list of amendments we wanted to go over. Um, and it became pretty clear as we were going through the discussion that we didn't, we didn't have a chance. And it also became very clear going through our discussion that people didn't know what was in this bill. They were finding out because more and more protesters were showing up at the Capitol, but they didn't, most of the rest of the state didn't know what was in this bill. They didn't know that there were uh, just dangerous Medicaid cuts potentially in this bill written by only the governor and nobody else. They didn't know that our, our power plants could be stole by the governor and nobody else, not even to the highest bidder. Um, and they uh, were finding out about the collective bargaining language uh, more that was generating a lot of steam. So it became pretty clear that we were left with one option because we wanted to slow things down. This was introduced on a Friday. They wanted it law by the following Thursday. So the only option we had was just to leave, um, to step back. If they're not going to engage us in a debate, maybe they will if we do this. But at the very least, we'll give people time to see what's in the bill. When you left February 17th, <clears throat> did you have any idea you would be gone this long? Uh, no. No, I thought maybe we'd be back that night. Um, I, I did. But uh, we also were very clear as to why we were doing what we were doing. Um, and we didn't talk how long we'd be willing to stay. Uh, once we got to Rockford, that never once came up. We didn't talk about uh, where we were going to go because we didn't plan on going anywhere at that point. Uh, we just sat around and, and talked about why we were so clear about why we were doing what we were doing. Was it ever difficult as you were gone longer and longer to hold the line? Um, yeah, I mean, there were, there were times when we all talked about, okay, well, when are we going home? You're dealing with 14 people who feel very strongly about this issue, but you're also dealing with 14 people with very unique, diverse backgrounds and opinions across the board on everything. Uh, that's probably the best thing about the Senate Democratic Caucus is we are so not like each other. Uh, and that, that actually helped, I think, in the end, make sure that we, we stayed together and stayed together strong. Um, everybody in the caucus has something to offer, something unique to offer, which is great. And we all played off of each other's strength, and that helped us a lot. So, but um, yeah, every once in a while we come up saying, oh, let's go home. Well, no, let's not go home. Or let's think it through, or let's see what happens today. So uh, in, in the end, um, I, you know, I, I couldn't be prouder to be associated with, with a group of people as, as the other 13. I mean, it just makes me proud to say that I'm one of them. How did you feel as you were watching what was happening back home? This is what democracy looks like! Extremely emotional, sad, uh, happy. Uh, it all depended on what was going on at the time. Uh, you know, there were times when, when I thought, okay, this is it, we're done, we can't, you know, not that we want to go home, but there's nothing we can do. Um, and then there were other times I thought the very next our okay because of something Mark Miller has done or Bob Jauk has done or Julie Lassa or Lena or whoever has done we've won we have beat them they, they they are going to have to compromise so emotionally just swinging all over the place and then seeing how this affects people back home and seeing how people were reading the legislation so emotionally it was all over the place and, and I'm sure it was for everybody else yeah I mean these tens of thousands of people and these signs thanking the Wisconsin 14 yeah. and the shirts and all that stuff how did that affect you well, for me personally, I, I, I know I did, I did something that anybody else in my position would have done. I mean, I don't look at it as doing something extraordinary because anybody who uh, is a Democrat would feel the same way. And if you're a Democrat senator, you would, you would do the same thing we did, given the circumstances. Um, but it, it also helped bond us a little bit more. And the, we couldn't believe there were T-shirts. We couldn't believe they were referred to as the Fab 14. We couldn't believe it. We just started seeing these pictures, and people started calling and telling us about it. So we were just like, wow, that's, that's pretty interesting. But again, it was one of those things where I think, and, and this is probably true for all of us, we didn't do anything that anybody else wouldn't have done if they were in the same situation. Was it difficult as Senate Republicans started ratcheting up the pressure? No, it was actually laughable. For a couple of reasons. First of all, rather than talk about the issue of collective bargaining or the Medicaid cuts to family care, badger care, um, or instead of talk about the, the, the sale of, of uh, power plants to whoever Scott Walker wants to sell them to, they're sitting in a room and they're thinking about, well, what can we do today? Well, we can pass a resolution and take away their parking. Or we can, we can take their paychecks and, and, and hold them hostage, which essentially is extortion. Uh, or we can uh, we can pass a bill, a, a resolution to find them. Every time they came out with one of these things, we were just like rolling our eyes because what a complete waste of time. 
they're not talking about the issues they should be talking about. They clearly don't want to negotiate on this because otherwise they'd be spending time on that rather than coming up with really inane ideas that they know they can't enforce. We didn't break any laws and we did not break any rules in the state senate and they know that and we know that. So yesterday, with what happened yesterday, mm -hmm. the surprise vote, were you surprised? No. It was pretty clear to a lot of us that they really only had one out and they were going to move forward. We know that they were in meetings together for a long time on uh, Tuesday and we know that they were in meetings for at least an hour with Governor Walker on Wednesday and we figured something was going to happen Wednesday night. Either they were going to come out and they were going to uh, say, okay, here's a compromise, or they were going to find a way to move things forward. And the reason why I think they needed to move things forward is I think some of the, the guys in their caucus were probably getting a little shaky based on just things we've read in the newspaper. So they had to do something. Um, so what they did was something we actually suggested in Madison before we left to try and slow things down. Let's take the non-fiscal stuff out of the, pilot, out of the budget because that doesn't belong in there. And that would include the collective bargaining language. And let's debate that and let's see what happens on the vote. But they wouldn't do it. So in the end, they had to do what they needed to do uh, to, get, to get this done. But at the same time, we all knew that that was pretty much the only option they had if they weren't going to compromise. So it wasn't upsetting? It wasn't upsetting as, as much as it was we were just all of a sudden confused. And we, <laughs> we were confused by something that most of us knew they were going to do. We just didn't know when or, or how. Um, so the idea is, do we go back and try and stop it or do we stay here? And there was a lot of back and forth and some senators into their, in their cars on their way back to Madison to try and stop it. And then we, st we sat for a minute and thought, if they're going to go ahead and do it this way, First of all, they're going to look extremely bad. Secondly, they, there may be violations of open meetings laws. Third, let them do it. If this is what they want to do, let them do it because it's going to show everybody this has never been about balancing a budget. This has never been about money. This has been about going after working, workers' rights in the state of Wisconsin. And this has been going after giving the governor the authority to cut Medicaid any way he wants to without any oversight at all. And this has always been about letting the governor sell power plants to whoever he wants to sell them to. So, if anything, what we got out of it was we got the opportunity for people to see what's behind the curtain. Let people see what, what this agenda truly is all about. All along you've been telling me you want a compromise, you want to mm -hmm. go home when there's a compromise. Right. That didn't happen. Right. So, did this accomplish anything? It accomplished a couple of things. Uh, again, it, it gave people a real sense of what this agenda is all about, and everybody pretty much understands this isn't something a typical governor in Wisconsin would, would push because this doesn't have anything to do with Wisconsin other than dismantling a, a great public service system, uh, cutting all sorts of things out of all sorts of places, and giving the governor authority that I don't care if it's Gott Walker or Jim Doyle or Tony Earle or Tommy Thompson, no governor should have that amount of authority that Scott Walker's grabbing from the legislature. So uh, we accomplished that and the fact that really shine a light on it, let people see what this is all about. But at the same time, the more we thought about it, the more we are actually having a debate on this legislation, um, but we're doing it by having to go to another state. Had we stayed home, there might have been five or six or seven hours of debate, and that would have been it. So uh, we absolutely accomplished some things, but most importantly, uh, we, held, we held together. And to me personally, uh, that means a lot. We did not want to be the ones to hand this over to them. And so it was very important that we stuck together. And, and there were some times when it wasn't really easy, but it was very, very important we stuck together. And each time there was a talk about let's go back, somebody would step forward and say, okay, maybe not. Let's think about this. Let's think about this. And it was, it was, it was kind of like we were all taking turns kind of telling each other we're not going back. When, you know, I would say one day, okay, well, we, maybe we need to think about going back. And somebody else would say, oh, well, wait a minute. No, we don't necessarily need to think about that. But in the end, I think it was important to all of us to make sure that if this was going to happen, we, we can't go back and let it, let it happen. They need to do it on their own, and that's exactly what they did. What do you say to people in Wisconsin who are heartbroken right now? Well, there's, uh, there's two things that can happen. You can take the punishment and you can go home and just accept that it, maybe that's the way life is going to be now, or you can actually continue to take that uh, pain that you're feeling and build it into something substantially larger. Um, every single person can affect change. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And what, we saw that at the Capitol, and we're going to continue to see it at the Capitol, but we are also saw it around the state of Wisconsin. When you have 1,500 people showing up in Wapaka, when you have thousands of people all over the place in, in the tiniest of towns in, in Wisconsin and in the biggest of cities in Wisconsin, uh, people clearly get this. 
it's going to motivate anybody to do just about anything to change the law, but at the same time, for those who are really truly heartbroken, you're not alone. I mean, there's, we all are, but we're going to do something about it, and, and we want you to, you, we want you to come with us.